Well, hey guys, I hope your week is off to a good start. I know I'm feeling much better now that I'm getting my Bastello coffee in my system. <laughs> I'm starting to feel alive and ready for the day. Today I'm going to review for you guys the Astracha Liquid Gold with Ceramides, Cholesterol, and Fatty Acids. This is a face moisturizing lotion. I mentioned a few vlogs back I've been trying it out and so you all had asked me to weigh in on what I think of it and about the ingredients. If you're not familiar with this, this is a facial moisturizing lotion that it contains a variety of, of ingredients um, and many of them, most of them are very, very logical. In fact, all of them are very logical ingredients. It has a variety of plant-derived oils which are rich sources of polyphenols, as I've uh, most of which I've discussed in my oils and skincare video. Uh, polyphenols can scavenge free radicals that uh, uh, set the stage for DNA damage and repair. Uh, excuse me, damage of the deeper layer layers of the skin and set the stage for aging and wrinkles as well as potentially skin cancer. However, antioxidants in skincare products aren't super stable and their free radical scavenging ability is always questionable and difficult to demonstrate, okay? So just be just be smart about, about relying on that too much. But uh, in addition to being rich sources of polyphenols, many of these plant-derived oils also are rich in linoleic acid, which is very important for skin barrier. Uh, rest restoration and skin barrier health. So these are, there are many logical ingredients in this. For example, this contains sea buckthorn seed oil, which is what imparts this yellow coloration to the product. Sea buckthorn oil has been shown to help uh, in the setting of he healing a wound and regenerate the regenerative processes that lead to healing of a wound. Whenever, whenever scientists generate even a tiny piece of data that shows that an ingredient uh, or plant-derived substance or whatever is helpful in healing a wound, cosmetic companies love to extrapolate that and start making an anti-aging aging claim because healing a wound is a regenerative process and so you know they like to take that and overlay it to their, their anti-aging marketing. Whether or not it holds true, there's really it's really difficult to say. We don't have that kind of kind of data. So again, buyer beware. But sea buckthorn oil by itself has been shown in laboratory studies to be helpful for wound healing and uh, it's very moisturizing and can be helpful in a moisturizer. This product also contains rosehip oil, which is you know rich in antioxidants, very popular. Um, but its uh, efficacy in skincare, as far as big studies, we really just don't have the data to demonstrate that to back the enthusiasm that uh, that you hear online for for using rosehip oil. But there, it doesn't seem to be harmful and potentially can be helpful. This product also contains ceramides, which uh, are in many moisturizers and are a component of our skin barrier that is very, very important, becomes deficient as we get older, leads and sets the stage for dryness. People who are predisposed to dry skin, people with a background of eczema, tend to be a little bit deficient in ceramides, and we know that applying them exogenously in a moisturizing lotion or cream form can help the body repair the skin barrier a little bit more expeditiously. So a good ingredient um, in, in this product. This product also has, you know, cholesterol and the fatty acids from the plant oils. So these are all constituents of our skin moisturizing barrier that it is helping to replace to get the skin barrier to heal itself um, so that uh, it's strong and uh, gold. <laughs> um, and so, I, you know, the claims are, are somewhat supported. This has glycerin and dimethicone, which are fantastic fantastic moisturizers. It also has squalene in it. I get many questions about squalene. Is that a good oil and things? Is that going to break me out? Is that problematic? The jury is still out on squalene. We have some tiny little studies that say it could potentially be problematic in people with acne because um, it's kind of overrepresented in the uh, sebum of people with acne to begin with. So it's questionable as to if it's a good ingredient for acne. But we don't have any studies showing that it's bad in acne either. So it's hard to say for sure what, what the deal is there. And we also have some tiny studies to show that 
for other people, it could be a helpful ingredient. So I really never know what to tell you about squalene. Um, I'm still kind of waiting to see more data on that. In addition to squalene, this also has um, uh, green tea extract. Uh, green tea extract is uh, one of the few that can be helpful for pores. It has actually been shown to be helpful in improving the appearance of pores to use uh, a green tea based moisturizer. So that's phenomenal that that is in here. People who are concerned about pores and clogging pores with using a moisturizer, I don't think this would be problematic whatsoever. And lastly, although it's at the top of the list, this also contains niacinamide. I have an entire video about niacinamide and skincare, which I encourage you to check out if you are curious. But niacinamide is anti-inflammatory. It can help with redness and it can help restore the skin barrier and it can also help impart a, a brightening effect to the skin. So the ingredient list in this is very logical. No, no fragrance, no essential oils. Uh, there's really no problem, problem player here. But overall, I was not impressed with this product. The several I've used it several times, uh, simply because um, it's really, really watery. Here, I'll just squeeze a little out on my hand. It's really watery, and it just doesn't make a nice moisturizing seal. Um, and I just don't think that it does much in the way of, of a moisturizer. If you'll recall back to my moisturizer Q&A, a key function of moisturizers to, is to help slow down transepidermal water loss. And the problem with this product is that it's so watery, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't offer an occlusive enough barrier to slow that transepidermal water loss down. So here, I'm just going to put a little here on my left cheek um, so you can see. Um, and it's a little difficult to squeeze out, to be honest with you, but I'm just going to put a little in, put a little on. And it's very liquidy. Um, so what this does is it doesn't really seal in water loss. So it's not really helpful for dry skin. But what you will notice with, with using this is that the skin kind of appears a little bit more bright after using it and you know maybe a little bit more hydrated. And that's because uh, the plant-derived oils in this they're emollients. They're softening the edges of the skin. They're smoothing things out. So this is kind of a skin smoother um, and a very, very light, 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 light lotion, but it's not good enough for dry skin and skin barrier repair. I don't think this is a particularly helpful moisturizer, for example, for people with eczema on the face, for people with really dry, sensitive skin on the face. I just don't think this is going to help restore the skin barrier sufficiently, given that it is not occlusive enough. I also don't think this is going to be helpful for people who um, have very dry skin around the eyes that they're trying to correct with a moisturizer. It's just not occlusive enough. It's not harmful. I just don't think that it really offers much over any basic moisturizer out there. This product cost $24 for this uh, 60 mLs, so it's pretty costly. And you know, overall, I was not impressed with it, and I would not uh, repurchase this. Um, but you know, if you're using it, I don't see it as problematic. I just don't think it's great, and I don't think it's worth it. Um, this is made by a small company. I don't know how you know what their manufacturing practices are. Um, it comes from Los Angeles. Um, and so that's, you know, another thing that you're kind of like at the mercy of is, you know, sometimes, albeit corporations are the death of us, sometimes it's, you, you do have a little bit of, of comfort in knowing that there's some standardization and kind of the mass production of, of some products. So while the Strasha Liquid Gold Moisturizing Lotion has some fantastic ingredients and overall the ingredient list is not problematic, I don't think this offers much as far as a moisturizer in terms of improving um, dry skin and in really, in really actually helping to restore the skin barrier as it promises. It's simply not occlusive enough. Um, and I think that's just because it is too liquidy, too watery, too slippery. I think if you put this on wet skin, it's just gonna slide, it just slides right off. It doesn't really, seal in the the moisture and tr slow down tr transepidermal water loss and like I said it's kind of expensive for the amount that you get I think a much better value particularly for people who are you know interested in pursuing some of these plant derived oils in a moisturizing vehicle like a lotion a much better value and a much better moisturizer in my opinion is the Ceramedics moisturizer by Earth Science this one happens to be vegan it has the cholesterol in it it has you know the fatty acid uh, components with the it's got the rosehip oil it's also got um, safflower seed oil which is rich in linoleic acid 
and it has ceramides in it that are plant derived so this product is actually vegan and this unlike unlike the stretch of liquid gold is much more occlusive you see it comes out you can see it comes out pretty thick it's not very liquidy and I'm just gonna put a little here on my face you know this is a load of like it's marketed as a body lotion but you definitely can put this on your face no problem this does not have the green the green tea however so you know, it may not really improve the appearance of pores, but importantly, for those of you who are concerned, this is not going to clog your pores. Um, this is great on the face. I reviewed this moisturizer for you guys previously, um, and what I really like about it is that it is a head-to-toe moisturizer. You know, you can, as you're stepping out of the shower, you can just put it all over and get a really good um, seal on transepidermal water loss. Um, and you know it's not going to clog your pores. It's fragrance-free. It's not irritating. It has the ceramides. It's really, really logical, and goes a lot more for. It gives you a lot more value for your buck in terms of the amount that you get for the price. This is like $14.99 for 354 mLs versus 24 bucks for 60 60 mL. So a much better value. This is cruelty-free and vegan for those of you who are concerned. But the CeraVe moisturizing cream in the tub that I normally use every day on my from head to toe on my face, my entire body, also um, makes a fantastic seal on transepidermal water loss. Very affordable. You could also use CeraVe lotion on the face, another affordable option. But in addition to CeraVe, Equate, Cetaphil, Eucerin, Aveeno, many of these brands make fantastic head-to-toe moisturizers that you can use it's just stepping out of the shower really get a good seal on transepidermal water loss that will help the skin barrier restore itself protect the skin from uh, you know excess dryness irritation fragrance free really phenomenal much better value and much more logical approach to moisturizing the face and body so I recommend those and I'll list them down below I don't think stretch of liquid gold is bad um, and you know I don't have a problem with it I I just don't think that it offers anything over a standard moisturizer. The ingredient lineup, it looks so promising, right? Like you're tempted by all of these ingredients, like they're gonna do all this wondrous stuff. But, you know, be pragmatic about it in that most of, most of the claims behind these ingredients are based on very, very small, sometimes not even human-based studies in, you know, lab studies on cells in a dish that are then extrapolated to kind of make an anti-aging and skin restoring claim. So, you know, rather than plunking down the 24 bucks on, on the gold, <laughs> I would say that the real gold is just a basic moisturizer. I don't see that this offers too much, much over those. And, you know, for those of you in the, the cruelty-free vegan vegan exclusive club, I really think that this is this is a much better better option, a much better value. But I have no problem with but I have no problem with the Stracha Liquid Gold. Um, and I would continue using it just to use it up so I don't waste it. Um, but I don't I don't recommend it and I don't think that it's worth it. So that those are my thoughts, but let me get another sip here. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review of the Stracha Liquid Gold. Comment below on if you use it and if you if you like it, what your thoughts are on it. I would love to know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.